You're fine. As a man, I love that song. It makes you feel strong. To You feel strong unless a lady asks you for a small girl. Of 20 million. Then you start sweating. <laughs> but it's good. It's good to make money. When you have money, life is good. And also you're not desperate. I had a friend who almost died because he was broke. Poverty is a bad thing. You know, when you have money, you have command. We were in school, the guy is called Caesar. Third term, towards the end of term, where you don't have anything to eat. If you miss a meal in between there, you may have to eat something else, cold it to survive until the next day. So Caesar was very pro, and the time was taken in, but God does not forget his people. We had Red Cross coming to school for a blood donation drive. And in Uganda, when you donate blood, they give you soda and a biscuit. That is what happens. Typical. So Caesar came to us and he said, guys, do you know you can get breakfast, lunch, and supper? We asked him how. He said, watch me. The donation started. He went to the first point, donated blood. They gave him a soda. They gave him a biscuit. He came and told us breakfast is done. Removed the sweater, rotated around, went to the next point, donated blood, they gave him soda, they gave him a biscuit, he came back and said, lunch is done. Hey! The guy was winning. He rotated, went to the third point, donated more blood, they gave him a soda, they gave him a biscuit, he came and said, supper is sorted. But when your forty days are almost reaching, the devil whispers to you and tells you that there is a bonus. Caesar came and told us, guys, do you know I can get takeaway? We said how he was like, watch me. He rotated, went to the fourth point, donated blood, they gave him a soda, they gave him a biscuit as he was coming back. Caesar fainted. But you know in Uganda, everybody is a nurse at some point. When you find everybody, they started throwing ideas. Remove his shirt, like give him more oxygen. The first nurse came and said, I know this boy, he donated blood at my point. The second nurse also came and said, I also know him, he donated blood at my point. The third one came and said, I also know him, he donated blood at my point. Hey! It was fun. Then until the fourth nurse came and said, ha. Ah, he also donated blood at my point. It's very unfortunate, he's going to die. But Caesar had some little energy, and he said, nobody is going to die. Just give me back my blood. <laughs> give Caesar what belongs to Caesar. <laughs> ah. It's not easy. <laughs> I met a colleague who works at Ministry of Health today. And guys have been moving around lockdown. Guys, let me tell you, as a person, as an entertainer, I don't like lockdown anyone be. Because I almost died within lockdown. Not because of the virus, but because of other factors, because of the lockdown itself. It just started as fun. Before lockdown, we were making noise. Ah, ah, there were professions that we used to undermine. Like LDUs. <laughs> LDUs, the Vassal Man, the Margaret of Somero. That was before. Then the president spoke and entrusted our life in the hands of LDUs. If you are caught up the curfew, you know how important the LDUs were. We started giving them unnecessary titles. Grandma, where are you from? I am sorry, sir. I'm sorry, doctor. <laughs> ah, 
we had a friend who almost died during the lockdown. It was a tough time. Guys did tough food. But I was one of the lucky guys who was influencing for a beer company. And I was getting two crates of beer per week. I was broke. Sometimes I did have money, but I had beer in the house. And I live in the small estate in Boyokerere of people who are not married. So every evening you look for something to do. You host us in your house, host us, host us, host us. It was a nice experience. Then it reached my turn for hosting. I have three friends, Kasule, Eniboy, and Bongomi. It was my turn for hosting. They came home. I put a crate of beer. We started drinking. It was fun. Then I went home. The worst thing that could ever happen during the lockdown is remember going home. Remember went off. But like food, you can never forget your mouth. We kept drinking throughout the whole night. When the electricity came back, the beers were done. Everything in the bread was an empty, but there was one empty which was broken. The entire leg was missing. We looked for it. In the bread, it was not there. We swept the house everywhere. The broken bottle was missing. Then my friend Bogomit said, maybe one of us swallowed it. <laughs> At that point, your stomach starts feeling weird. And your neighbor looks like a suspect. We were quiet for like 15 minutes, waiting to see what is next. We couldn't speak. Then the first guy, Kasule, went up. We said, he is the one who has swallowed the broken bottle. But like this guy may die, he went and sat on his veranda till morning. Kasule woke up, he said, man, are you okay? He said, I'm okay. Are you sure? He said, I am sure. Now we have to look for another suspect who has swallowed the broken bottle. As we were going back, we had Bogomit screaming, a dog, meaning I am dead. We ran back, saying he is the one. When we reached here, just knocked his door. Meaning, he wasn't. Now there were two suspects left. Eddie one. The next, and then me. The next day, Eddie woke up. He was very sick. The eyes were dead. The guy said his throats were painful. He was sweating, so we concluded that it is Eddie. But we said it is Eddie. This is the suspect. But remember during lockdown, cars are not moving unless you have a sticker. So I called a friend in India, I was like, man, you know what, we have a friend who is sick, we need to take him to the hospital. He said, I'm supposed to be in the field in Lugazi, but I can drop you from Guayokerere to Chireka, then I can proceed. Nice. He dropped us in Chireka. We looked around, there's no serious hospital in Chireka. We looked around, we looked around, then we saw a clinic which had the sign of Safe male circumcision and minor surgeries. So he said minor surgeries, which means they can operate on the guy. We read the hospital, the nurse told us the surgeon is around, but the machine to scan and confirm is not there at the clinic. If you guys are sure that your friend swallowed the broken bottle, we can operate on him. But what we say, we are very sure. In 1986, my arm was all the broken bottle and he died. These were all the signs. And I said, it is okay. We can proceed. Before Eddie went to the theater, he told me this jacket is there and there is the ATM card inside. I looked for it. We put the jacket on the side. They started operating on our guy. On assumption that he has the broken bottle inside. We saw the nurses doing everything possible. They operated, the guy opened the stomach, they were using a spatula, they were using tongs. If you've ever smoked shisha, you know what tongs are. Everything they checked. We knew the worst that comes to the worst. When the doctor went out to the scurry and picked that machine for security of, of the metal, went back and put it over his stomach, but still there was no sound. 
became concerned, so we started suggesting what do we do? Like, let us also collect money. Kasule said he has 100,000 Ugandan shillings. Bongomin said, me, I have 17,000 on mobile money. Me, I didn't have anything to offer. I told them I have beer, and they said, okay, this is not for me. Said, the guy may get the photo later. So, after collecting our money, I decided to go and pick the jacket I was given. I checked in the first pocket, there was nothing. Second, there was nothing. Inside pocket, I felt something high. But our boy was already on the table, they opened his stomach. They are looking under the intestines, what everything. When I check inside, I picked it was the broken bottle. When Bongomin saw it, he said, Ay, yeah. I'm the one who put it there. Yeah. And forgot. But since they have already opened this door, let them operate anything. Maybe they are bending. Those things always have stories. Those two guys, Bongomin and Eddie, used to support the same party, but one is in Luke, one is in Aaron and now. They can't look at each other. <laughs> ah. It's during the lockdown that I knew I, I had a job which is not essential. Life was easy until the president made a speech and said essential workers, non-essential workers. Everything was so good. 